Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So in this tutorial, we're going to create an Instagram story right inside of Premiere. Last week, we did a tutorial on doing this inside of After Effects. However, it might make more sense to do this in Adobe Premiere if you're more of a video editor rather than a motion graphics artist. If you are into After Effects and motion graphics, go ahead and check our link in the video description to learn how to do this in After Effects, which I highly suggest doing motion graphics in After Effects. And of course, there's only one style that I can show in this under 10 minute tutorial. So if you want more examples, go ahead and check our link in the video description and it'll take you to this page where there are multiple examples of Instagram stories so you can break down their ideas and their styles and formulate what works best for you. And of course, if you're not time crunch, these are pre-made templates, meaning that if you purchase these templates, they're ready to go and you'll be able to drag and drop your elements within a few seconds and have your project done really quick. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check out links in the video description if you need some ideas or if you're not time crunch. But let's go ahead and start a tutorial and let's get started. So the first things first uh, is you want to bring in your image and we want to set the size of the sequence. So we're doing Instagram stories, not typical 1920 by 1080. It's actually the opposite. So once you have your image or video in here, what you want to do is make sure your sequence is selected here in the timeline. Go to sequence, click on sequence settings. So what you want to do is set the horizontal size to 1080 and the vertical size to 1920 right here. And this will allow you to set it up for a vertical portrait. And you click OK and it'll resize automatically. So that's the basic, that's basically, that's, that's essentially the first big step in getting this started. Then what you want to do is double click your image or video, go to effects controls under the motion tab. You might need to scale down your image. And if you, you also can reposition uh, it depending on you know, how much room you have and you can center certain objects in your frame. But this is great. We are able to see our subject here or you know, if you're promoting a product, this is what you'll be able to do. You want to definitely showcase that as best as you can. Now that we have our image in here and we're optimized for exporting this for an Instagram story, we can start designing this and adding some information here because you just want to upload a picture. You want to actually put some titles on here, make sure they're presentable, nice and clean, and maybe have a little bit of animation on it. So let's go ahead and let's get started on that. So let's go up to File, New, Legacy Title. All right, and we'll call it Title 1, I don't really care. And we'll want to type out our title, so we'll grab the Text Style tool, and we'll type out you know a couple lines of text here. So maybe we'll type out Summer Sale, and I'm going to use a very you know, neutral typeface. Maybe I'll go with Beep as uh, New Oo. And we'll have this nice blocky text in here, and we can make it a little bit larger. And having a good uh, title design is really going to help you sell a good, uh, you know, design in this, uh, you know, project file. So we'll have our first title in here, and you know what? I'm just going to click off this, click OK. I'm going to import it into our timeline, and there is our first title. And let me actually see if I can zoom in here by a little bit so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. And I want to add maybe two more titles in here. So what we can do is come here to the uh, project window, and I'm going to copy the title one, paste it. And we can call it title two. And we're gonna put this on top. And we can come into here. We can bring this one down. And we can be like, type in our new title. And then we'll do it one more time. So we'll create three titles. So we have our three lines of text here, which is very important that you have your information out there. However, you wanna make sure that it stands out on your background. So what we can do to make sure we do this is we'll bring all three of these layers up depending on how many text layers you have. You wanna usually create a background for your titles depending on the image and videos, but your goal is to make sure it stands out. And it kinda of does that right now, but I wanna take this further because you know, not every situation is perfect. So we can come here to the bottom where it says new item, click this icon, and we're gonna click on color matte. And we'll just click OK. I'll resize it later and we'll keep it at you know black. I think that's fine. We'll click OK. And we'll bring this into our timeline and we're just going to get this black mat here. We'll click the black mat. We'll, open, we'll go to the effects controls. We'll uncheck uniform scale and we can scale the size and the width of this. So we have full control over this and you know makes it a little bit easier to work with. And we can bring it underneath our first title. And we can always adjust scale width and you know optimize this for perfection. All right, so I got the first block in here, and here maybe I'll duplicate it. We'll copy and we'll paste it. You know, easy way to do it, and we'll bring this one underneath again, and we'll position this one downwards, and then we'll go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it. So we'll have another color mat in here. We can you know bring it downwards, and I would like to change the color of this to another color so it stands out even more. However, if I do that. Um, it's going to change the color of the original color map because it's all under one layer. So all we have to do is copy the color map, paste it here in the project window, uh, make sure it's selected the duplicated copy in the project window, right click the layer in the premiere layer or the premiere timeline, excuse me, and we'll come here to replace with clip from bin. So it's been replaced and now we can double click this 
and we can change the color of it no problem so it stands out um, if we did if we didn't replace the clip they both would have changed so you don't want that to happen and we want to find like maybe another primary color so this could be like a branding color all right and we'll go ahead and copy that black color mat and we'll paste it we'll put it back into there and we'll make sure we'll bring it down to cover up the apparel only you know, overall I think that looks pretty good I think we have a good design in here so all we have left now is to animate this and to make the stand out so you know Premiere is not necessarily a motion graphics software and you know I don't want to go over the top of motion graphics I want to make it clean and presentable and put emphasis on each of the words as they come in so that's what we'll be doing in this uh, animation you know perspective here so what I want to do is parent each of the color mats to the right titles so that we can put them in our own nested sequences. So what we want to do is isolate the title that goes with the background. So what we'll do is we'll grab our title and our background. We'll have them both selected. We'll right click them and click on nest and it'll be nested sequence one. Click OK. Then we'll find our second title and background and we'll select both of them. Well, we'll nest those together and we'll do the last ones and we'll nest those together. All right, so now we have our three nested sequences of our titles in here, and all we have to do is animate them. So we'll grab our first title, which is the Summer Sale one, and we'll want to animate this in, so we'll make sure it's selected here in the effects controls. So what we can do is add a keyframe for position. We can move the keyframe forward in time, maybe by a second, and do an X position off this way. So now you have this animation in there. And what I would do is right click the last keyframe, go to Temporal Interpolation, and set to Bezier. So this way it'll kind of slow down towards the end there and we can maybe speed up this animation by a little bit because we want these to be a little bit quick so now you have that one in there and you know I don't necessarily want to you know, do the same animation style you know consistently I mean we can do that but let's go ahead and do something else so maybe we'll do like a scale here on the 50% so we'll move this keyframe forward in time so maybe to like a you know second we'll readjust in a second and bring the scale down to zero this is cool and all but uh, so we have a nice scale animation here. However, it's coming in from the center and I don't want that. Let's just delete the scale real quick and we want to reposition the anchor point. And our goal here is to reposition the anchor point right in the middle of our graphic. So now if we scale it, turn off the keyframes for a second, it'll scale right from the anchor point. Then all we have to do is reposition this back into place with the position controls. And now we'll come here to the beginning, add a keyframe for scale, move it forward, set the scale down to zero. And now it'll scale from the center just like that. And then also we can add a keyframe for rotation. We'll move that forward to the you know last scale keyframe and we can rotate it by a touch. So maybe we'll go like negative 20%. And now you'll have this. And we'll select both the last keyframes here, right click them and set them to uh, Bezier. Nice. And of course we'll move these keyframes in so the animation is a little bit quicker. That, there he goes. That's nice. And we can offset this layer in time, maybe by like a few frames. So that'll come on and then that will come on. And all we have left is the last title. And perhaps we'll do the simple thing of the position again. We'll grab that keyframe, move it forward in time, and we'll go from the left side to the right. So there you have that. And we'll right click it, set this to a Bezier as well, and we'll move this back in time. And maybe we'll actually bring the keyframes in by a touch. So now we can preview this. Boom. And we'll actually move this forward a little bit more looks good so now you have your set of titles and you know you can start advertising whatever you're advertising or showcasing a good story it doesn't really matter what you're doing but you have these titles and so let's say we want to take a little bit further because you know I'm just working with an image here um, you know obviously you might want to work with video but I'm doing images it doesn't really matter uh, whether I have a video or not but what we can do here if you know whether you have video or not we can add a little extra animation here we'll double click the uh, you know your image or video and we'll add a keyframe for posi position and scale and you know move forward to the end here five seconds is you know our story i guess and we can scale this up by a touch and we'll reposition this on our i guess the glasses right so now we've run through this we have a little bit more you know animation in the background and that definitely helps a lot now i would also would like to do is add some animation to the titles as well to put more emphasis on it um so what we'll do is we'll grab all three of our sequences, the, the nested sequences, right click them, click on nest, and boom, we got down to one comp. Then what we'll do is we'll just drag this into here. And now we'll add a keyframe for position and scale again. And we'll come here to the end. And you know maybe we'll have this come downwards a little bit. And we can have this scale up if we want. 
So this will have a little bit of animation as well. So I don't know, it's, it's just something to think about um, to add more movement into this. And of course you can add like a logo or you know whatever. So maybe I'll do that real quick. And of course you can always add like a logo or whatever at the top. I would definitely consider you know adding some other branding elements into here. But essentially, you know, you're able to create a Instagram story with your titles um, and text information very easily inside of Adobe Premiere. And it might make it easy for you editors out there. And of course, I do suggest doing this in After Effects. It's a lot quicker and you have a lot more capabilities of what you can do. If you're interested in learning about After Effects, go ahead and check our link in the video description to watch our After Effects version of this, which is, in my opinion, a little bit easier to work with and you know, a little bit more advanced, but easy to follow along with, of course. And of course, if you check our links in the video description, we can look at you know plenty of examples that might work best for you. Um, and you can, of course, go ahead and recreate what you're looking to do. Uh, you know, very similar. I mean, you have your text. It's all about the graphic design of your titles and working with shapes. And that will really help you, you know, excel with having a well-designed, well-rounded Instagram story. So keep that in mind. And I was hoping that I get that across in this video that you, know, you can use good typography and good graphics to make your title stand out. So I hope you guys were able to take those techniques from this video and you enjoyed the video. If you guys did like the video, be sure to drop a like on it because it helps me out tremendously. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film, because we post filmmaking and motion graphics videos on the post-production side. And hit us up on our social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always be creating.